Welcome back to my channel. Just got back from vacation, took a little cruise down to the Caribbean, had a good time, ready to get back into tuning videos. Today's video is gonna be on this 2005 Chevy Silverado. It's got a 5.3 with a truck Norris camshaft, long tube headers, built 4L60E transmission. Just pretty much your run of the mill combination that a lot of guys are doing. So let's go ahead on and jump in the truck, get it inside and get it on the dyno. right away we're not starting off on a good foot i don't know if you guys caught that but whenever i went to move the truck from the parking lot inside that long crank time with that pop that's usually a sign of a bad cam sensor so this truck's probably going to end up throwing a po342 or a po343 cam sensor code and so basically what happens is you go to crank it truck doesn't see the cam sensor so then if you shut the key off you actually fail it and it goes into batch fire mode and it'll fire right up so let me uh i'll just show you guys what i'm seeing Let's get inside the truck. All right, so I'll show you guys. Let's just go try to start it. Start up fine that time. Let's see if I can get it to do it again. Well, not having any troubles right now. So I'll go ahead on and we'll just get out and I'll show you the combination. And when it does it again, I'll try to catch it on camera again. So again, we have a 5.3 Truck Norris camshaft. This thing had a high ram on there and I explained to the customer that was gonna cost him a bunch of torque. So he went ahead on and had the guys swap over back to a stock manifold. So I'm sure they'll do some type of cover or something cool to make it look good. Looks like they just kind of made a cold air intake work. But I mean, that's okay. It could do, they could do a little bit better. But it's got some aftermarket injectors in here. I need to figure out which ones. The truck's actually pretty clean overall. Let's do the read file. So on this one, I'll pull the ECU and we're gonna pull the read file off on my bench harness. Let's go ahead on and get this ECU pulled out. Now, some of you guys may be wondering why I'm pulling the ECU. So on the 03 to 07 Classic trucks, the ECU is known to brick. So when you're doing a read file on it, you have to either do it one of two ways. Either you do a low speed read with a couple of the fuses pulled, you have a good chance of it being read out okay, but it's probably gonna take 15 to 20 minutes or you can just pull the ECU out, do a high speed read, and you don't have to worry about anything. So I'm gonna just pull out the ECU, it's what I always do, it makes my job a little bit easier. Anyways, get this cover off, you've got to, there's just like a little tab, you just pull on the, pull out on the computer cover and move this up radiator hose out and that cover just comes straight off. So next what you're gonna need is you're gonna need your pry tool. You know, Snap-on loves these to be pry tools, but just long flathead screwdriver, pry bar, whatever you need. Just pop this little clip off, you'll see it. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, there's a little plastic clip right beside the metal clip. You just pick up on it just slightly and the ECU will come out. Um, so this one, the harness has been zip tied on. So normally I could bring this up and like kind of get it up in this area and show you, but all you need now is going to be a seven millimeter and a little ratchet. And it should be pretty self-explanatory. That's just how the ECU connectors are. So you can see where my socket's at. This one's actually missing the gray cover for right here, but we need to remove this bolt and this bolt. And they don't come, the bolts themselves don't come out. So you'll just loosen this thing up and you'll feel it. It'll kind of be easy to turn for a little bit and then it'll start to get stiff. And once it starts to get stiff, it's actually starting to back out of the ECU. So you just keep going. All right, so ECU's out. Let's get over to the bench harness. This is my little temporary bench harness setup. I don't have like an office or setup at the shop. Again, I just rent the dyno here. But anyways, I use the bench force harness. I can put a link in the description for this one. This one is more for you guys that are gonna be more professionals and bench flash a lot of ECUs. There's actually a couple good little cheap ones on Amazon. I'll drop the link in the description for that one. So that would be the one I would suggest if you just got just a Gen 3 truck and you're just messing with Gen 3 style engines, I would just go on and do the cheaper one. Connector goes into the top. You just snug it up. You don't have to do anything crazy. Power it on. And we do a read just like normal. Because we want to read out high speed, again, this is only the 03 to 07 classic truck, P59 trucks. But if you just click read, the software is going to automatically read it out at low speed. So you're going to still have that 15 to 20 minute read. Um, but if you click gather info and wait for it to populate, it'll actually give you a checkbox that you can check to use high speed. Again, only use high speed when, when the ECU is on the bench. So you click use high speed and hit read. 
but we only do this on the bench. If you try to use high speed inside the truck, there's a good chance you're either gonna brick the ECU or you're at least gonna get a controller unlocker message and you're gonna need to bench anyways. So, but but as you can see, like this is, I don't know if y'all can see it, but we're at a three and a half minute read versus like a 20 minute read going the other way. So it was worth like minute and a half, two minutes or whatever it took to pull that ECU out. And also this gives me a guarantee that none of the aftermarket wiring inside the truck is gonna cause me issues. This truck actually has an aftermarket alarm system. It's got aftermarket stereo. It's got a bunch of aftermarket stuff. And that's primarily the issue with, with the P59 trucks is battery voltage. So just doing it this way gives me a more solid read. So anyways, I'm gonna let this read out. We'll go through the tune file and then we'll put the ECU back in the truck and we'll do some data logging. The tune file's read out. Let's go ahead on and dig in this thing. So right now I have a stock file in the background for comparison. So this truck had been tuned previously. I'm not sure who did it. It could be the same person that tuned the 2010 Silverado. So we may have just some really interesting things in here, but again, we'll just, we'll just take a glance. So obviously they changed the auto RPM. I mean, it's fine, 800's fine. This thing had a stock torque converter and there's some kind of surprise that it's up, up to 800. They did base running airflow. Okay, let's get this switched over to grams per second. All right, that seems way low, but it's okay. Friction airflow initial, we're gonna switch this over to grams per second. That's been raised, throttle cracker. I mean, they reduced it. They basically, it looks like they, maybe they just like cut it in half almost. Anyways, not a big deal. I mean, there's, there's so many ways to skin a cat, so I'm not too concerned about stuff not being done the way I would do it. Ha, ah, V table. Bone stock, cranking V, bone stock. If you notice how it's blue, blue means when the stuff is the same. So they've tuned it in math only mode, apparently. Yup, tuned it in math only mode, V is still factory. So it's just, they just ran through as a shortcut. So instantly I'm gonna already know, okay, whoever did this was trying to run through it as fast as humanly possible. Let's see, math calibration. I mean, it almost looks like they just globally added fuel and didn't actually like tune it. Anyways, so stoic is still set to factory at the 14.68, which is incorrect. Uh, flow rate versus KPA. I mean, they have it shaped correctly. I need to figure out what these injectors are, but I mean, at least, so, you know, as we've talked about before, the most of the 03 and a half, 04 trucks and newer, the fuel system is deadheaded, so it doesn't have the factory fuel pressure regulator on here. So this person at least did know that they needed to keep it shaped correctly. These may be some quality injectors. This injector data actually looks halfway decent. So I'm assuming this is probably gonna be plug and play data. Anyways, let's keep going. Long-term fuel trims disabled, perfect. That's what I would have done. Um, P table, I mean, it's fine. I mean, so far everything looks okay. Other than it being math only, with no VIN changes. Kind of got some weird spots right here. I'm assuming the truck was picking up some knock and they just like copied and pasted it right there. So this is the 4060 killer right here. They zeroed out the torque reduction table. Now again, this one supposedly has a built trans, so it may be okay. But knowing the the transmission builders in, in our area, like it's probably not. It's probably not okay. It probably needs torque management put back in it. Brake torque management is still active though, so they did not do that. So the truck probably wouldn't have done a burnout. Drivetrain abuse has increased. So I mean, for the most part, everything looks okay. Shift schedules, um, shift points, I didn't even look. I mean, it's possible that the file that I'm using in the background has a different axle ratio, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. This still has the issue where this would dump all line pressure if they command over 96 PSI. So we'll straighten that up. Added six PSI across the board. I mean, that's, that's fine. Shift time's been zeroed out. If this is built like they like like what the customer told me it is, that's probably fine. Um, TCC duty cycle has been increased, so that that's better. So this this right here is a table that you would increase on when you do an aftermarket torque converter. 
this is what this basically this is a PWM table so it can actually pulse width modulate the pressure going to the converter you want this thing just to come at it with all the pressure and lock it up just like an older transmission would be so we'll end up increasing the minimum but at least they raised it so whoever was in here actually did know what they were doing um, it is unfortunate that they still half halfway did it so that's weird so they they disabled torque reduction over in the table but they they it's like they were trying to do a good thing so this torque reduction right here they actually halved the factory torque reduction so i mean that's not bad but then they took away the actual so so if so i can go and explain this to you guys so this torque reduction right here this actually references the factory table over here uh right here it's torque management general spark retard torque loss so if you have it on the transmission side trying to do a a good thing but you zero it out right here the ecu has no idea what that half means anymore so with this zero there's no torque management period so no matter what this says over here there's no torque management in this truck so they were trying to keep the 4l60 alive with tuning but they just yeah they, they fudged this right here so we'll have to put this now so what you would do is you would put this back to factory and then the other table that's halved that would actually make half torque management so they, they were they were doing they were making an attempt to do it correctly they just still missed the step so anyways that's the overview as to what we look for when i'm going through here so obviously we do need some tuning but at least i mean this person whoever did this was way better than the person that did the 2010 silverado they're definitely not the same person for sure so anyways let's go ahead on and get in the truck and we'll start the data logs so install is the reverse order of what we did prior so it's literally just shove these connectors in there and when i say shove i don't mean like aggressively i mean just lightly put them in there i have a lot of guys that will bend the pins on these and then they'll call me saying something's not right in the tune or whatever and it usually just comes down to they just got too aggressive with these so you just put them in lightly and as long as you can pretty much wiggle the connector back and forth with no resistance you just tighten the thing back up Now, one thing to note on a P59 truck, especially, I see it on P59 trucks more so than I do the PO1 earlier, like drive by cable trucks. But I've had a lot of, of trucks where the oil pressure sensor would actually leak internally, and the wiring harness had a good enough seal where the oil pressure would actually fill up the entire wiring harness on the truck. So, what it would do is it would actually pressurize from the oil pressure sensor, it would actually fill up the insulation on the wire, and it, the oil would work itself all the way into the ECU and it would actually fill up the connectors on the ECU. So if you see, if you go to pull your ECU off and you see a bunch of oil inside your ECU, it's very possible that you may have to replace your harness on your truck. And if it gets to that point, with the, as hard as it is to find harnesses right now, I'd probably just go in and call, contact Current Performance or Tick Performance, do one of their plug and play Holly Terminator kits. Because otherwise, I mean, it's, it's gonna be a nightmare to get that harness replaced. Wiring's hooked back up. There, so we're going to just drop this ECU back in. There is a little bit of a pocket that it goes into. When you shove it in, it'll clip to that black plastic clip. Then you just shove down on the, on the metal clip. And then this, you just lift up on this radiator hose, drop it in. There is a rear tab that you have to line up with. And then you drop it in on this front tab and we're good to go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and pull our fuses for doing flashing. Now, if you're going to try to, to read the ECU out in the truck running low speed, you're going to need to pull these fuses first. I usually pull these fuses after the fact, but these are the three important fuses that will help control voltage on the truck. That way, when you're flashing it, you're not going to have any issues. So this one's got like a little add a fuse here. Your truck won't have that, but I just moved it out of the way. Grab a set of pliers. And the first one you're going to do is this 15 amp radio fuse. Next one you're gonna do is your info fuse. This is 15 amp right here. And then the last one is gonna be this uh, radio amp fuse. Whether your truck is a Bose truck or not, pull this fuse. I've had a lot of guys with base trucks that were having issues and this fuse was the last fuse that actually got them to where they could actually read and write their vehicle. So we're gonna put this out of fuse back because I have no idea what this is going to. And now let's go on and head on and get in the truck and do some data logs. All right, so back in the truck, I'm gonna go ahead on and get logged into the truck on the scanner. With the ECU head being pulled, I've got a feeling that it's gonna do the cam sensor issue right now. I'm gonna let the scanner get connected and we'll start recording and then I'll start it and we'll see what it does. 
It actually started right up. I'd almost bet money this truck has an aftermarket cam sensor in it. So if you guys, again, if, I don't know if I said this in earlier in the video, but if you're needing to replace the sensors, get them only from AC Delco or GM. If you do an aftermarket cam sensor, again, I don't know if y'all watch LT's channel, but in LT's channel, he also figured this out too. He, he had an aftermarket cam sensor in there and it'll just have intermittent long crank time and it'll intermittently throw, or sometimes it won't even throw the code, but it'll intermittently have long crank time and that single pop and you let off and it'll fire right up. So this truck where it's not, it hasn't thrown a code yet and it's not doing it all the time, I'd bet money it's got an aftermarket camshaft sensor in it. So what this customer will need to do is this customer will need to replace that cam sensor with either the one that came out of this engine originally or a junkyard one or just you know get on rock auto and buy an ac delco or gm sensor anyways tune has not been changed i just pulled the file out and so we're gonna just kind of look through and see where we're at a lot of my settings in the scanner are actually going to be off um because i changed laptops this one's a little bit newer of a laptop i've got a couple of these tough books So right away, I'm going to assume we've got an issue, whether it be a vacuum leak or something like that. Our idle desired airflow is at five grams per second. And this truck with this camshaft is going to need more than that. It's also pulling idle airflow out of the truck. So I'm going to assume this thing has a vacuum leak. Now, again, the shop just actually swapped back over to the factory intake manifold. So it's possible it's got an injector O-ring leak, or it could be that that throttle body is a part store unit and it's calibrated incorrectly. So let me go get some more information on this, but I can tell you that you know a lot of guys have been you know asking for me to show you what I'm seeing in the log when I'm trying to diagnose a vehicle. And this is this is issue number one is, is we'll look at dynamic airflow and if you notice how we're at 9.3-ish grams per second, that's about where we should be. So the fact that this is so low tells me that something's not right. So let me go do some digging and we're gonna get back to this. All right, so I just got out and checked the throttle body it is actually a stock unit so that throttle body it could be a remand from a long time ago or it could be the original one of this truck but somebody's painted on it uh, but the inside of it's still dirty like it's, it hasn't ever even been wiped out if it was just from the dirt the truck would actually be wanting to add airflow and not subtract it but as the truck's warming up i mean it's getting better but it's still it's still just not close enough so Realistically, I should probably have the guys smoke test this thing to make sure everything's okay. As I look at everything else, fuel trims look good. As y'all can see, I actually calculate uh, VE uh, in the background at the same time as tuning math, just like I do on the Gen 4 and Gen 5 stuff. So I may do a video on that one day, but you'll see where the VE table is at. So we, we're, right now we're seeing, let's say roughly 48% VE at 800 RPM at idle. Um, so we're at 52 kPa. So we'll go, go in our tune file, uh, 50 kPa right here, 800 RPM. You'll see this is 68 to 70 percent. So you'll see that, I mean, there's a ton that needs to be subtracted off of idle VE, which again right now isn't affecting anything necessarily being in math only mode, but it's still just not the correct way of doing it. So if you guys wanted to see the, the drastic difference again, if you look right here, 68 to 70 percent is where we need to be, and this is what the this is what the ECU is actually calculating right now. So I'm going to do some thinking about what I want to do on this throttle body, but I actually had a late start on this truck today. So I may just keep this video as just a, essentially a video showing you guys how to do a read and start just taking a glance at the tune file. So we may actually get into tuning this thing tomorrow, but I may go on and have the guys do a smoke test. Let me do some thinking about it and I'll get back with you. All right, so we've smoke tested the thing. You can see the throttle body's dirty. So it's old, so somebody painted on it, making it look new, but inside of there, it's old. So th these trucks, they're notorious for having bad throttle bodies. Usually what'll happen is they'll throw a P1516, I forget the other code, I think it's like a P2101 or something like that. But it'll tell you that basically there is a throttle correlation issue in the TPS. It's, a, it's like an AB correlation issue in the TPS, which is right here. So we've smoke tested this thing I looked at the data log. The truck does not show the correct desired idle airflow compared to the, uh, the dynamic airflow. And that usually is a sign of this thing's developing some slop. So if there's some slop in this TPS, eventually it'll throw those codes. I could technically tune it just like it is now, which is what most tuners would do. 
And then what would happen is, is as soon as the truck go P1516, they would just say, you know, they would ask their tuner or whatever, and the tuner would say, well, we'll replace the throttle body. They'd replace the throttle body, and then the truck would have idle issues. So me always trying to be ahead of the game, we're gonna actually replace this thing with a brand new GM throttle body. Uh, it'll actually be here tomorrow. So we'll replace it and I can actually start the calibrating process from there. So what replacing this throttle body does, is it allows me to calibrate the truck correctly. So we're not gonna be band-aiding it and we're not gonna be baking in any air, like in our airflow tables or anything like that. The new throttle body is gonna give me the, the confidence in tuning the idle and knowing that I'm not gonna have to worry about the customer coming back for idle issues. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We talked about how to do the read file on the P59, um, what fuses to pull when you're flashing a P59, and essentially how to diagnose a bad throttle body just by looking at idle airflow values. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to go into a part two. So tomorrow we'll have a part two of, you know, I'll put on the throttle body. I probably won't show it in the video. There's no sense in that. And then we'll get this thing on the dyno and get it strapped down and get it fully calibrated. So anyways, guys, thanks for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. I mean, this channel is, is really doing good so far. I will see you guys tomorrow.